Hey, what's up, fam? Seven Deadly Sins managed to keep me interested within the last chapter. I, I'm pretty hyped for it. I think I was paid off pretty well with uh, the whole matchup between the one Escanor and uh, Zeldris. I sadly, but luckily, realized going into this fight that with uh, the big cocoon of orb, sphere, darkness thing, that apparently was... A seemingly indestructible at least within their their own universe's capabilities right now that there wasn't going to be any like big crazy displays of uh of power on like a environmental scale i, I don't get why um i don't get why nakaba has has really done that lately like when the if you recall like when the the ten commandments showed up he was like blowing up mountains left and right like doing some big stuff and <laughs> But now, like, every time characters get in, like, a big match, they're, like, in a perfect cube or in something like this. Or just, like, they just don't display any, like, large-scale damage. I don't know. I don't know what he did. But this one definitely has some cool panels. Obviously, the one I'm using is uh, it, it, definitely probably one of the coolest ones within the series in a while. But I actually like how it kind of starts out. Eskunor walks up, slams his axe down on Zeldris. You know, his ominous nebula holds, it, but uh, Escanor kind of only escapes with a couple scratches from that. Like, obviously, you know, like, how powerful his uh, ominous nebula is, and it's only able to give, you know, tiny little <laughs> little uh, bruises and scratches to his arm or to his hand. And it just is, is, is minuscule and nothing really noticeable. So he ditches his, uh, his axe, Rita, and, you know, puts up that holy sword, Escanor. Karate chops down on him and gets, you know, you see the, the Ominous Nebula bending and going almost through, but then right at the kind of the last moment, puts down and Zeldris has to block with his sword. Get, I like that sword. I like that Executioner's Blade. I like those. I always notice them just from the shape because they don't have the tips because they're made for beheading. Uh, just, a, just a cool note. And then a, a new attack from him, and I'm wondering how many he actually has in his the one form because he he shouldn't have that much training with it or even like time fighting in it but i imagine his attacks you know didn't take a lot of uh, uh a, a lot of effort creating obviously his his sword is a karate chop and his holy lance escanor is a it's just him poking him very aggressively with a finger i'm wondering if somebody's going to make any good memes out of that it just that just looks like a good meme worthy thing which is just that giant poking hand. But that just like completely broke through Zeldris. He's like spitting up blood. And it was right then when Chandler went and dropped his uh, what, Eternal Night or whatever spell. And you know made it so the effects of nighttime were, are up. And Escanor turned back into his you know weaker self. Leaving him you know taking the, the biggest player that the opposing side has out and i'm wondering why he didn't do that way quicker like right when that started and maybe his elders wouldn't have been completely just broken i know obviously they were didn't want to get sucked up by the ominous nebula but you, you'd think that the demon who could just heal himself just have that normal demon regeneration but he just dropped it sooner and then made it so the elders wasn't just a a big you know bloody mess right now because it was in that opening where his ominous nebula was taken down that, uh, oh god, always always struggling to pronounce him, Rusian Dell or whatever trap angel guy, goes in uses his uh, attack, gold shining, to further heavily injure Zeldris, leading up to the chapter two ninety title, cunning maggots. I would like them to get. Get to the next fight already if they're gonna take out Escanor. Because now, now what I'm kind of wondering is why even put them kind of up against each other when you had like Escanor and uh, Chandler, and then it's just like another display. Like Chandler can just shut down Escanor completely until Escanor or until Chandler's defeated. Escanor's like strength and uh, kind of value to the team is. It's pretty much nothing. He's a hard counter. Like, what's he going to do at that point? So, we'll have to to figure out what exactly is going to come of that. Actually, kinda before we go, before I end this, I just wanted to know. I actually 
originally didn't like the larger Escanor design. I, I preferred the one that he was normally in the day one where he's, he's buff, but he's not like huge. Cause I remember when he first was, uh, when he first showed up in the manga, first debuted his like proportions didn't change like the, or at least like he would get buffer, but his arms and everything would kind of stay the same. It, you can definitely, it, his head is definitely bigger right now. And like in the way that he is in the one, just because if his hand is that big, and his hand is like as big as, it's actually bigger than Zelda's, so there's no way that his, you know, no way that his head is normal head size, or it would just be like a little speckle. But I really like that sick fire mane that he has. I think that's pretty neat. I think he at least looks a lot more badass with that kind of added on to it. Wasn't a huge fan of his scowling in the one, but I do like that fire mane. That does look awesome. So... Tell me in the comments what you think about this chapter. I think it was better than better than the last couple chapters with this uh, real cool display of Escanor. I think a lot of people still hold Escanor as the, the best character on the good side. I like him a lot. I think he's pretty cool too. But anyway, yeah, otherwise, thumbs up the video. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Maybe check out my other videos, mostly manga and anime stuff. And if you're already subscribed, appreciate it. Thank you. But otherwise, thank you very much for listening.